Students and parents are annoyed. They tell me it's frustrating paying so much money to these complexes that boast about student luxury living when it comes to what students describe as mold issues. It's deferred maintenance. They're not maintaining these units. Home for the summer only to come back to potential mold in your apartment and your HVAC faulty. August 10th around like one o'clock she came in and found mold on the um, floors, cabinets, fridge, couch, everywhere. I have ours on 71 and when my roommate went in there um, late August she saw that it was on 78. That's what residents at the Eastern on 10th apartment complex say happened to them after power went out in their building in late July with no notice to residents who were not yet back at school. The maintenance manager came in and he said yeah that's definitely mold like I've dealt with a lot of it and that's definitely it but management of Eastern on 10th is claiming that it's not mold. There's no mold in our apartment. Like we don't know what to tell you. There's still like black stuff all over the bottom of the sink. So he found water moisture, like obviously in there and then in our where our AC unit is. So he found it in there too. City code enforcement assessing the situation noticed excessive dust particles surrounding ventilation that needed immediate attention. So the tenant and her parent called a third party remediation company to come in and sanitize the unit, costing them $2,300 out of pocket, a bill they say Eastern on 10th should reimburse. None in your side reached out to Eastern on 10th, then providing a statement that reads in part, we have no known issues of mold infestations in any of our units at Eastern on 10th. When a resident reports mildew inside of their unit, our office quickly addresses and rectifies all issues except for any personal belongings. Letters from Eastern on 10th's attorney claim the settings the tenants left the HVAC on caused the mold to form and therefore they say management is not liable financially or otherwise for any issues that occurred, saying they would call it even by covering other repair costs costs they were already responsible for. And another student living resident claiming he came back after three weeks to find mold on the majority of surfaces in his unit, causing him to throw out upwards of $5,000 in property, including a laptop. There was a, a bubble in the bathroom and also a water spot in my bedroom. So I told that to my renter's insurance agent, got in contact with the building manager. We walked through it and he said it was improper use of the AC. But he also said that he looked through my past utilities and um, it was all normal. It hadn't been shutting off or anything. It was set at 71 degrees. Making a list of all that was lost to submit an insurance claim, Miller waited for an official cause of damage to be determined for the claim to be approved. The claim is denied by insurance because the Jolly Roger says they were unable to find a source or water leak, so therefore they say they're not liable for damaged or thrown out items. We reached out to Jolly Roger management who says this is an isolated incident and their team has been working diligently to resolve past issues. They gave this statement to WNCT that reads in part, new development construction projects occasionally experience items that require additional attention. Our team early on was able to act swiftly and address the root concerns with permanent solutions, resulting in an increased resident satisfaction. These efforts and resolutions have led to phenomenal retention, where residents are proudly calling the Jolly Roger home for another year. None on your side also reached out to residents from our prior investigation who say for them living conditions since last year have been great. All problems remedied and the apartment complex making a promising effort to rectify their reputation among residents and the community. This was the first and only incident reported by Miller while residing at the Jolly Roger. He has since moved out a prior arrangement. None on your side spoke with City of Greenville officials about the standard of living they expect from student housing management and landlords. Brock Letchworth, public information officer with the City of Greenville, says this time of year as college students return to classes, they get the most complaints about housing conditions. Know what you're signing a lease for. Take a look at the property which you're going to be living in before you agree to anything. I think what happens is a lot of times folks are from out of town and they see these complexes and they agree. Then they get here and it's, of course, not quite what you see in the pictures. Letchworth says the city performs initial inspections on property after construction, but after that their involvement is complaint based and gauged by the city's minimum housing code standards. It was very frustrating. I mean, we, we didn't expect not to get support. You know, we didn't expect that they would just throw their hands up in the air and go, you know, 
this is not this is not mold. Maintenance officials say if you leave your residence for an extended period of time, it's best to leave your AC on auto as opposed to on. That way new air is circulating throughout the unit instead of stagnant air being moved around. Something not all homeowners might know, but a good rule of thumb. WNCT also received complaints and documentation of poor living conditions at additional student living complexes, including the Davis and Copper Beach. All parties declined to interview. Reporting, Emily Severage, 9 on your side.